You may have heard of a new study recently released suggesting that very elevated good cholesterol levels, or the HDL, which is the cholesterol level that you actually want to have more of, may not be so healthy after all. So I hashed it out in an interview with Monica Reinigel, whom you may know as a Nutrition Diva host on the quickanddirtytips.com network. Well, what's up healthy people? I'm Dr. Madge, a practicing family medicine physician, here to share home treatment tips for common medical conditions for you and your family. So I got the chance to work with Monica while I was podcasting as the House Call Doctor host for nearly a decade prior to hosting this YouTube channel. And for those of you who may not know Monica, she's a board certified licensed nutritionist who has been featured on the Dr. Oz show and various news and TV broadcasts and is an author of six books. Her podcast is one of iTunes most highly ranked health and fitness podcasts since its debut in 2008, where she discusses evidence-based nutritional info while separating fact from fiction. For those of you seeking all the latest nutritional trends and fads, I urge you to check out her podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, or any other podcast app. This is where I would actually send my own patients and family to as a reliable source amongst the sea of nutritional misinformation on the internet. With that, here's the video of our interview. Here we go. So a couple of weeks ago, I had some basic blood work done for my routine physical and all the numbers looked pretty good, but my doctor and I were high-fiving each other about my high HDL score. It was 88 and that's measured in milliliters per deciliter. So just by way of a quick review, there are lots of different kinds of cholesterol in your blood and HDL, which stands for high density lipoprotein, is the one that we often refer to as good cholesterol. We don't want that number to be too low because having an HDL level below 40 milliliters per deciliter puts you at increased risk of heart disease. And that's why you'll find several articles in the Nutrition Diva podcast archives with strategies for increasing your HDL level. So needless to say, I was feeling pretty smug about having an HDL level that was more than twice that target level. But then just a couple of days later, a new study came out with some, to me, shocking news. It found that although low HDL levels are a risk factor for heart disease, the study found that very high HDL levels, such as mine, may not be cause for celebration. Because in this study, those with HDL levels higher than 60 also had an increased risk for heart attack or death due to heart disease. My first call, of course, was to Dr. Majd to help her, to ask her to help us understand whether or not having high HDL levels is something that we need to worry about. Dr. Majd, what can you tell us? Well, honestly, Monica, if you're in trouble, then I'm in worse shape than you because my HDL was 108 and I'm a bit... <laughs> I'm a vegetarian, so I always attributed it to that. I never gave it a second thought until now. But I did look into this a bit more, and there are a few recent studies that came out um, showing similar findings, but then there are other studies that have shown the exact opposite. So honestly, the jury is still out on this one. Um, it's probably not enough for me to um, change my practice on this, but perhaps it's enough to get the conversation going and maybe wait for further research um, that shows us exactly how elevated uh, HDLs can equate to dysfunctional HDLs. Um, the question honestly really is, um, does everybody with an elevated HDL have dysfunctional HDLs or is it just a subset of people? Well, before you go on, can you help me understand what you mean by dysfunctional HDL? Now, I've written in the past about how the size and the shape of cholesterol particles may be an important factor, not just whether they are high or low density. Um, is that kind of what you're talking about? Is this a similar situation? Yes, exactly. You know, it's just a hypothesis right now, but the theory is that it's really the quality of the HDL. So um, just because you have very high levels of the good cholesterol, it doesn't mean that they're working properly, that basically they've gone out of whack. And so um, they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing, which is to actually transport the bad cholesterol in the arteries and in the rest of the body to the liver, where it gets processed, filtered, and then eliminated from the body. So if it's not doing that, it's hanging out, that bad cholesterol is hanging out more in the arteries, causing plaques and hence increased risk of heart disease. 
So before we could really respond to this new research, we might need more sensitive tests that might be able to help us distinguish these different types of HDL cholesterol. That could just be a more complex category than we previously recognized. Yes, exactly. Okay, so, so tell us what this latest study actually found. Yeah, so the study involved about 3,000 people with established heart disease, which is key, and an average age of 63. And what it showed was that those people who have an HDL of over 60, which is what the study defines as very high cholesterol, um, HDL levels, these people actually have 50% higher risk of developing, or I'm sorry, uh, of dying from a heart-related event compared to those people who have an HDL between 41 and 60. Now, it doesn't say much about people like me and you, Monica, uh, who may be younger, who don't have established heart disease or even risk factors for heart disease. So I wouldn't quite lose sleep over it, um, especially if, other, if your other cholesterol numbers are at target and or if you don't have risk factors or heart disease itself. Well, I have to say that is reassuring because, you know, the things that are associated with higher HDL levels are generally healthy habits. So for example, when people ask me how to boost low HDL levels, I might suggest that they lose weight if they need to, or exercise more, or increase the fiber content of their diet. And I can't see advising anybody to gain weight or exercise less or eat less fiber in order to bring down their HDL levels. But right. what about those people who do have high LDL cholesterol levels or heart disease or other risk factors? Should they be worried about high HDL levels? Well, you know, currently the, still the treatment guidelines um, have not changed based on just these few studies. So um, right now we're still targeting to lower LDL cholesterol, which is which has been classically the type of cholesterol that's been most associated with developing heart disease and research findings. So our target is still to lower that and not to really change HDL in either um, direction necessarily. We honestly, we just need more, we need more data. You know, it's at the baby stages um, of these findings. And so I know that the, the treatment guidelines are not gonna change for doctors until we have uh, more information about it, but it's, I'll be honest, it's probably enough that if I see patients with established heart disease or significant risk factors for heart disease and they do have an elevated, a very high HDL, which I'll tell you by the way, is not very common. I don't see it very much, but if, <laughs> if I do see it, I'll, it'll, it'll probably cross my mind, um, but it wouldn't really change my management at this point. Um, it would just be food for thought and no pun intended, nutrition is that. <laughs> well, and of course, so often we do get these health headlines that come uh, across the news wires that have important research findings, but are still too preliminary to lead us to change our behaviors. And so that's also really helpful to know which things are worth changing what we're doing and which things are really just uh, information that we're gonna continue to gather. So thank you so much for helping us put that in perspective. Thank you for having me. It was really fun having, um, having the chance to talk to you. Oh, well, it's great to have you back on the Nutrition Diva podcast. And for more of Dr. Majd's advice and help in understanding the latest medical headlines, do check out her new YouTube channel. You just go to youtube.com slash M-A-J-D-M-D for all her latest content. And I have a link to Dr. Majd's channel in the show notes for today, along with links to some of this research that we've been discussing and other resources that we mentioned. And as always, if you have a question or a comment, you can post it there on our website at nutritiondiva.quickanddirtytips.com or on the Nutrition Diva Facebook page. I always love to hear from listeners. And now, um, Dr. Majd, listeners have a great week and remember to eat something good for me. Do you know what your HDL cholesterol is? If so, share it with us in the comments down below and tell us what you've done to improve the numbers. Now, if you found the information useful, let me know by giving it a thumbs up and share it with someone else who may find it useful. And don't forget to hit that red subscribe button down there on that bell that's next to it in order to learn more useful, actionable health tips for the busy person who can't always make it to the doctor's office. Now, please remember that all content presented is for informational purposes only. It's not specific medical advice and you should always seek a licensed physician in your area for all health related concerns. Well, thanks for tuning in. Stay heart healthy and I'll catch you next time.